Praise God. The question I'm to ask was, ask, somebody asked me the question, and I told him I cannot answer it. He said, whenever he's in church, it's always a kind of door. But we do went outside there to take something to, you know, to make him feel high. And then... It's always what? It's always a kind of shy. Or it's, it's always down shy whenever he's in the, uh, in the church. He doesn't... So, he cannot so he pray will, God. He cannot he pray will, God he the will, way he feels. He will go out and take it, go. Not, I, don't really, I don't know what he's taking, but that's what he told me. He said he will go out there and make himself being comfortable and kind of high. And, and when he came back in the church, take some shots of Ogogoro. I don't even know what he's taking. I don't know what he's taking right now. But so that's what's what your he told question? Me. My question is, he was now asking me that, is he right that because whenever he's taking those things and came back to the church, he'll be more okay, as in he'll be praising God to, uh, to an, another, you know, higher esteem. You know, that you'll be praising God, you'll not be tired. What is your question? The question is, he asked me if it's, if it's good. I said, I don't know. I want to now ask the question, how? Is he okay? Is he okay? You have already known what gets him high. It's not the Holy Ghost that gets him high. It is the thing that he went to take that gets him high. That is not, <laughs> that's not the Holy Ghost exciting him. It is what he has taken. He's a drunkard. <laughs> yes. Okay, Sister Flores from South Africa. Shalom, sir. Please, I want to know if speaking in tongues while praying without understanding the meaning, is it right? Because under prayers, I do speak in different tongues and I don't understand what I am saying. Let the scripture answer you. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 14. I think Apostle Paul says something about that. Uh, verse 13, he says, uh, Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily giveth thanks well, but the other is not edified. Then he said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. If you go to verse 28, it says, um, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Now, now go to Romans. Let's go to Romans Chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit is making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Take note that by, by the time you are speaking in tongues, in your private prayers, the spirit takes over. That is why you are now praying in tongues. That time it is now an action of the Holy Ghost. It is not a message you are given. So that becomes uh, uh, a supernatural action. But there is always an effect of that. One, your spirit man is built up. Because 
the power of God comes regularly on you like that, your body goes under, your spirit man comes up. And I want you to note something very important. Almost every one of us that speak in tongue, take note of this. When suddenly you find yourself speaking in tongues like that, most of the time, you will also see vision at the same time. As you are speaking in tongues, you don't know what you are saying, but you will be seeing some things. And always, what you are saying is related to what you are seeing. And that is why you can therefore, you know, uh, sometimes you now give a revelation of what you see. So for intercession, sometimes you could just uh, maybe maybe confirm this for instance. If it is somebody you know, suddenly you were praying your prayer, suddenly the spirit takes over and you are speaking in tongue. Then a vision of a brother or a sister comes up. Now you may not know what is wrong with him, but the vision comes forth. And you just speaking in tongue, speaking in tongue, speaking in tongue. And then when the anointing leaves you, the vision also leaves. Get in touch with that person. And ask him, as so, so, so hour, what was happening to you? Always, he will tell you either at that instance he received a healing or he was in some danger. That somehow supernaturally he escaped. Then you know God raised you to intercede for him. It happens. God bless you. Fidelis, go ahead. Praise God. The Holy Ghost does not come to see you. The Holy Ghost is already with you. The Holy Ghost is always with you. It's always in you. Now listen, church. God does not want us to depend on sensation when dealing with him. You don't, you don't, God, God does not want you to depend on sensation. God is around only if I begin to feel feel vibration. If I feel hot, then I know that it's around. If I feel breeze, if not, I continue to pray, it never come. Where you go? It's always with you. The church shall live by faith. Not by sensation. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So sometimes when God sees that you are depending too much on this sensation, he will stop that sensation on you. So that you can move by faith. If not, danger, you face a danger, you will not pray. Somebody is dying, you say, well, I never feel God never come. Where you go? Praise God. So it is also God's way of training you. And sometimes you manifest, sometimes you don't manifest, but it's always there. And learn to exercise faith. Learn to exercise faith. Those of you who, who have these experiences, this is how you check it. Once it is not anything contrary to the scripture, don't be worried. If you say something and it comes to pass, that is the, the gift of faith. The gift of faith says it and it comes to pass. Especially when you say it under serious, uh, uh, under an anointing. 
in an atmosphere like that or something you know causes you to spontaneously say something like that it must come to pass it's a gift of faith you say it you go your way the Lord Jesus Christ is sizing before that fig tree no man eat the fruit from thee and that's what the thing dried up that same gift is still available now God bless you. So, Daddy, I said one day I will ask you about that, the meaning of the Holy Ghost, because I discovered. Yeah, the meaning of Holy Ghost. Any time, any, there is some ministry you will enter when you call Holy Ghost fire. They will tell you they don't call Holy Ghost fire in their ministry. So, I keep on wondering the meaning of Holy Ghost or Holy Ghost is, in fact, I can't you understand. See, you see, when you meet carnal people holding spiritual things there will be confusion there is an enter message pastor that was speaking against the anointing that is in this church he said that according to him he said in the bible all the spirits according to him i'm not sure he has read the bible enough he said that every every spirit that met with Jesus Christ, it, it bowed down, it went forward. When brother assembly, then they fall down for back. Therefore, it cannot be the Spirit of God. And then another one says that the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. Why is it that people are manifesting and scattering everywhere, scattering everywhere? He said that cannot be the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is gentle. So what comes to my mind is Jesus Christ, the one that baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. Tell that pastor to come and hold fire and then he will be gentle. <laughs> Let him hold fire. Then he will be gentle. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost is described as wine. Then let that person be drunk. When he's drunk, then he is gentle. You see people who don't know. Now, first and foremost, what is a ghost? What is a ghost? It's actually, I don't know. Eh? Actually, I don't know. No, it's an English word. What is a ghost? A ghost is a spirit. Eh? For me, I, the spirit of a dead man is called what? It's a ghost. So the spirit of a holy man, what will you call him? Eh? So who is the Holy Ghost? It's the spirit of Christ. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When they don't know, they don't know what they are saying. Anytime you say Holy Ghost, you are calling the Spirit of Christ. Praise the Lord. And that is why he told his disciples, wait first, wait first. The promise of the Father. Unless I go before you will come. Praise God. Because it was his Spirit. That Spirit, the Bible says in John chapter 19, it is finished and he gave up the ghost. That ghost is what came down on the day of Pentecost. It is his spirit. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of Christ. And what is the spirit of Christ? It is that spirit that came down in him and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Why? Because Christ is God's dwelling place. The temple of God. And God is a spirit. And God is holy. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. God Himself. The tabernacle in Christ. Hallelujah. And He released Him to come and dwell in all of us. So anytime you say Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God Himself coming down. That same Spirit that was in Christ. God bless you. And he has fire. The, 
the spirit of God is not another God. It's the same God of Israel. And Elijah called fire from God. He called down fire from God. And God is a spirit. Therefore, that fire is which fire? It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. So it is the Holy Ghost fire. Forget all these uh, blind carnal people who are trying to handle spiritual things. Okay, yes. Shalom, church. Shalom to you. So my, um, I learned that demons are spirits. But my question goes like this. Whenever we pray and we say fire, fire, die, a, referring to a particular demon, does the fire or the killing, does it have any effect on that demon or the particular situation? Because demons are immortal, and I believe immortal cannot die. So whenever we say fire or scream, as, uh, referring the demon to die, does it have any effect on that on such demon? Uh, listen, listen. We we listen very well. We have sp we have spirits. Sometimes it depends on what we mean when we use the word demons. Demons. Anytime we say demons, we refer to evil spirits. That's what comes to our mind. But let me tell you quickly, by my understanding, that demons, they are the invention of evil spirits. When an evil spirit creates something that can torment you, they invent something that can torment you. That thing they throw on you and it gives you problem is the demon sent by an evil spirit. The spirit can never die, but their works as demons can be destroyed. That's what I want you to note. That's why Brother Abraham said, behind every sickness, he said, there is a demon. And so they appear in different, different forms and different, different shapes. They are inventions of evil spirits to throw and disturb people. So you can call down fire, and the fire of the Holy One will destroy that demon. But the spirit that sent it there is still alive, it can't die. Until we get to Revelation chapter 20. <laughs> when they will pack them, put them in the lake of fire. They die, but not now. They will not die now until the lake of fire. So my next question, my next question goes yes. this way. That for example, uh, is it proper for a, for sheep to refer their shepherd like followers to refer their, to their pastors? call them daddy. Maybe some of them you might be older than them, but to call your pastor daddy and the wife mommy? Because I was wondering, if you call your pastor daddy, then what will you call God? Yes. I do know that Matthew 23 forbids that. But now listen, we must understand the context of the usage of that word that you should not call it no one father. Matthew chapter 23. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 23 verse 9 okay from verse 8 8 and 9 9 10 it says but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Now when he said, call ye no man, and call no man your father upon the earth, the man that gave birth to you, would you call him your father? 
Yes, Will sir. you go and call the father that gave birth to you on the strength of this scripture? Call him brother. <laughs> no, sir. So you must understand that. Now, uh, uh, Apostle Paul referred to Timothy as my son in the Lord. What will Timothy call him? Who call him his son? Father, sir. Eh? Father. <laughs> Why are you not talking confidently? Father. So, so that means we have to understand that context. That the worship you give to the creator, don't give it to a human being. Praise God. Then my last question goes. And like please, this. I want you to take note that cultures also influence this. In the Western world, nobody calls uh, their pastor in America, in, in all these the Western nations, nobody calls them daddy, mommy. No, it, this thing is only in Africa. And I'm sure it started from the Yoruba land. Because the average, that is where you see, you don't see that overseas. Where the pastor, we call a church member, I want to see you, barely he comes, he kneels down. Now that's a Yoruba culture that connotes respect for the elderly. And it is no sin. It is not sin. It's not worship. In fact, they come and they lie down. When they want to thank you, daddy, daddy, you give me a say, Look, I can't thank you, sir. And they need that. It's the culture. That is all they are, they are, they are, they are, they are exhibiting. And so, uh, um, we must, you know, differentiate that from worship of a man. But I also know that, that there are also men of God that have assumed the position of lordship. Them and their wife. And daddy G.O. Mommy G.O. And they accept it. And any man that accepts it is an antichrist. It is wrong to do that. I battle with people a lot in my office. When they, I send for them, the Yoruba will come and kneel down. The only people that don't worship are Igbo people. They don't they worship anybody. They go stand, kagaraga, pocket, say they talk to you. Especially if that man gets money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when they kneel down, I feel I always be very embarrassed. Please stand up. Please stand up now. Please stand up. If you don't stand, I won't talk to you. I can't accept worship. I'm not Antichrist. You're my brother. You're my sister. All of you that call me daddy, has any of you ever heard me call you my daughter, my son? Have you ever heard me say, hey, that's my daughter. You're my daughter. Come. Nothing like that. You're my sister. You're my brother. Nothing beyond that. Praise God. If I call you my daughter, it means I brought you up. You lived with me. All of the ones who live with me, I call them my sons and my daughters because I fathered them. I brought them up. But for you, if now Christ link me and you, you're my sister. You're my brother. Uh, <laughs> God bless you. Praise the Lord. And you should call me brother. Somebody came and said that hey, this way you say we call you brother. No fito. Uh, you be daddy. Oh. You be daddy. I say whatever you like, call me. I'm your brother in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then somebody called me and said, Why should I answer? Uh, call me from which country? Why am I answering brother? You saw brother, brother. Uh, why am I not answering either reverend or <laughs> so I had to ask him the question I said listen very well I said brother and reverend which one is higher 
Brother Moses and Reverend Moses, which one is higher? Which one is higher? The man answered me and said, yes, yes, I think you are correct, I think you are correct. I said, I am already answering a higher title than Reverend, Reverend Doctor. I said, it's lack of revelation. I walk by revelation. The title of brother and sister is higher, higher. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you know that Romans chapter 8 verse 29 For whom he did follow he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many So who is Jesus Christ to me? My elder brother Amen. He is also my God. He's my prophet. He's my redeemer. He's my everything. So if you call Jesus my elder brother, have you seen? It's a revelation. Okay. So yes. my last question. Is it um, proper for a prophet or a man of God to discuss with a demon and during deliverance? Well, is it proper or biblical for a man of God to be conversing with a demon during you deliverance? Know, if you say scriptural, I must give you the scripture. That is, when you say is it scriptural, it means I should give you scripture that is against it. When you talk to a demon, there must be a reason why you want to talk to a demon because. There was a time that Jesus said, asked some demon, how many are you there? Was it not a discussion? And what did they tell him? Yes, sir. Uh-huh, so they talked. Now, now, listen. In the Bible, we are given power to cast out spirit. I didn't see where they said we should be discussing. So me, I don't have time to discuss with any demon. Get out! But sometimes when he's talking, I want to listen. But from my personal experience, from my personal experience with deliverance, 90%, I say from my study, 90% of what those spirits are saying, they are lies. Lies. Complete lies. Let me tell you why I say this lies. Praise God. A demon. We are not, Apostle Paul said, we are not unaware of the device. There are two things in deliverance that demons do before they leave the person. Either they will take the person and try to enjoy you. As this one is now, you go carry on with your head. Or these sanctions that we erected here for our gallery. It will carry you for that aisle like this. Make I go before I go and finish you. But if there are coordinators to stop you from injuring, then let me damage your personality. Yes, I am queen of the coast. Yes. I am the one that cover all the family so that you will have problem with your family. Yes. I am the one that scatter their business. I am the one that scatter now trouble in the pool for you. Yes. Any man I see after the witch man will come near you just to finish you and blind deliverance ministers We'll be taking it to show that they are powerful. Not knowing what the devil is doing. Oh, imagine like those pastors who come out and tell young girls and boys to give testimony that they were healed of HIV. Which brother will go and approach and say, I'm going to marry you. It's wrong. So a proper deliverance minister will not waste. You don't even have time for such. Discuss what with this devil. And sometimes 
They do that to weaken you when you are on serious fire for deliverance. Then they go talk so that you go cool down the fire smoke. Then they are talking. You no, know, they say that style that they do make the fire cool down. Before you walk up yourself again to enter the spirit to chase you out. Ah, you don't cool down smoke. <laughs> While the fire is on. <laughs> Praise God. Chase the thing out. Let me get out of that place. God bless you. Online, I'm Arachi from Benue State. Shalom, sir. With all my expectations to receive the Holy Ghost, I did not because there was no sign. Can one receive and not know it? No, if you receive, you must know it. William Abraham told us about the baptism of the Holy Ghost without sensation. He was using it to stop the denominations, the lies of the denomination, or calling the attention of the people to sensation until there's no sensation, you don't receive the Holy Ghost. Now, now, now the sensation there is that you receive the Holy Ghost and somebody looking at you will see and say, something has happened. But now, without sensation there is that you receive the Holy Ghost and somebody looking at you will not see any visible manifestation. But you will know something has happened to you. Either a peace sweep over you or joy in your heart. Just come like that. It may just be one sweet breeze that just blow past you. Not only you feel up. It didn't throw you down. But after that, something will happen. Now also, Receiving the praying for the Holy Ghost is the same thing as praying for any other thing at all. You may receive the Holy Ghost immediately you ask him. Or you ask him, it may take some time. He decides at what time to give you. But let me tell you, the evidence of water is the test that we feel. And everyone that is tested shall be filled. And so, if you are there desiring the Holy Ghost, it is evidence you are a candidate for the Holy Ghost. And God chooses when and how to give you. But I'm telling you, every one of you that participated in this program, we just concluded. Be in expectation. It can happen at any time. There's a young girl here. Asinedu. Years back. When we have program like this and everybody was testifying, she saw all that happened. And she believed God so much, it was so much, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. For months, she will fast, she will do this. And then she started saying, Abi, am I a serpent seed? Why am I not receiving the Holy Ghost? See? And then, so one day she decided, okay, if you like, give me. If you like, don't give me. I don't pray for Holy Ghost again. So she was no longer expecting. On a Sunday like this, I understand later that Nene, where is Nene? Wave your hand, Nene. Nene is there. Nene of old. Oh, how are the mighty falling? She started prophesying at what age, Pastor Thomas? From the age of 11 in this church. That's Pastor Thomas' daughter. She just qualified now as a barrister. Let's clap our hands now. She's now a barrister. Wave your hand now. That's right. At that age, where is the Asinidu I'm talking about? Where is she? No, I saw her today. Oh, Bina, where is she? If she doesn't come here in the next five minutes, the Holy Ghost will bring her. In the next five minutes, you will pick her on the floor and bring her here. In the next five minutes, watch and see what my angel will do with her now. Well, I'm saying something. She was the one. Where is she?
You are not in the hall. Where were you? In the office. Take your time. Home. If not, if not, if not, if not, collect my microphone from her hand. Why should you sit in the office? You will tell God, have mercy on me today. She's the one. Suddenly, you know, Nene told her that Sunday morning as she was coming to church, Nene went to her. Auntie Asi, today we're going to go visit you, you we are white cloth. And she said, hey, come on, give me a chance. That Sunday, something happened. Packed her. All her cloth from white, it turned to brown and black. I'm sure it's a day she will never forget. And from that day, she began to prophesy. God began to use her too. So it took so many months from the time she started crying. She will cry, cry, cry. Lord, am I a serpent seed? Give me the Holy Ghost. Uh, <laughs> ask him to have mercy on you. Me, I ask of you, you know, come out. Anybody here? <laughs> the fire is still on you. Okay. Uh, Who are asking? Eh? Have you people ever seen my angel in action before? Okay. She's married though. She's married though. This anointing. Single brother, they follow that anointing as they talk to her. Thank you, Jesus. It's okay, it's alright, it's okay, it's okay. Thank you, Lord. This way, this way, this way, Jesus is passing this way. Passing this way today, Jesus is passing this way. This way is passing this way. This way is passing this way.
God. Oh, we give you all. All our glory belongs to you, Jesus. I need no 